whatever it is. <laughs> we won't tell you just you just dance it just watching you hold that flower up. Remember when we couldn't find flowers? That was a terrible time. One more time. Yeah. Okay. Hi, ladies. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Doing okay. How about you? <laughs> I'm good. Are you guys freezing to death? Is it cold and snowy there? Um, it's like spring. <laughs> no, it's ridiculous. Really? Well, just be glad you're not in New York, I guess. I wish they'd send the snow this way. We need it. I wish we had that snow. I love I it. Snow. We had a ton of rain and then it cleared up this afternoon. So um, so now it's clear skies, but um, yeah, we needed the rain. So it was good. Well, that big storm came, the one in the East Coast came from the West Coast, but it went just under us oh, we got a know. tiny smidgen of it yeah we just got literally a dusting that's all we got we got at least five inches of rain it was crazy that so, is it wow. and then that in the last week 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 and a half so but you know well, that's good though because you need it we do we're just a little worried about mudslides from the fires but um if it's not one thing it's another but um, anyway that's what's happening here well, mm -hmm. shout out to shout out to the people in cold, snowy New England. We're thinking of you. That's why we're making some warm soup. Yay! <laughs> Tonight we're gonna do some uh, sort of Franco-American comfort food. Um, oh yay! And this is not a traditional French onion soup, um, but it's a sort of a simpler shortcut version that has all the good flavors. Um, and by shortcut, it's not that short of a cut, but, um, but you're gonna have all the good flavors and it's not as heavy. So, um, and then we're gonna make a great slaw, um, a cabbage-based slaw. I love making different slaws. I think people just think of either like picnic coleslaw or of an Asian coleslaw, but there's so many things you can do. Cabbage, and it's, you know, I, I'm trying to, pick foods that are grown in the winter so that we're getting the freshest possible um, that are grown here in our hemisphere. So they didn't sit on a boat for, you know, weeks and weeks before they got here and have a huge carbon footprint on them. So yeah. all, these, all the things we're eating tonight are grown here in California and are shipped all over the country, but it's just grown in my backyard in the Salinas Valley. So it's not far from Nice. Me. So we're going to stick with some parsley, cabbage, celery, onions, all good winter veggies. Um, mm -hmm. So this will be good. And yes. economic, I love this what? is an economical dinner too. This is, so this is, um, you know, it's, it, this is a vegetarian, although I am gonna use chicken broth, but you could use uh, veggie broth too, if you mm -hmm. want strictly vegetarian. Um, and this could be a first course, you could add, um, you know, some chicken or pasta after. Uh, there is a little bread in this, so we do it. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, you mean soup? Yeah. This is pretty hearty. I, I think actually this and the slaw is kind of all you need for a meal. But you could, you know, if you're doing something a little fancier or whatever, you could always just do this as a first course and maybe have a little smaller bowl. The thing about the soup is that you do need an oven-proof bowl. So these are these cute little bowls, you know, cute. the brown cute. ceramic with a little handle. Um, if you don't have bowls, you can bake it like in a, a casserole dish and make it that way and then just sort of scoop it and then ladle some of the soup in. Um, it doesn't look as pretty, but that doesn't matter if it's just your yeah. family and, you know, yeah. don't care. So don't. Yeah, no, one's no one's having company. So right now it is just your family. <laughs> no one cares. No yeah. one cares. So if you want to do it with a, um, uh, in a casserole dish, you can, and then just put it, like I said, into individual bowls once they're out. But the way you know it's um, oven safe is that it will usually tell you on the bottom. So these, um, a lot are microwave safe and it'll say dishwasher safe, but it doesn't say oven. So re it has to say oven. Otherwise, um, cause this is going in at 350, it'll crack the ceramic if it's right. good for that. And then you'll make a mess and then you'll be cursing my- And then you'll be unhappy and nobody wants that. Oh, why'd you do that? And you'll ruin the soup. You'll ruin that. 
He wrote two. Ruined two. <laughs> All that work. <laughs> so the most work is the onion part. Um, so I actually start, I did this before because this is 45 minutes, folks. So this is a dinner. I know it's COVID. You're at home. You got time. So I, trust me, I cried like a river. I had to, I just ran and wiped all the mascara off and put some back on. Why? Because you cut those by hand? Because <laughs> the onions, yes. So, okay. So I, I mean, you I, can do them in the Cuisinart if you have that attachment. You, you could. But I, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> if you're super smart, you could, but you know, I'm a better <laughs> food. Food. So I, I cut them in half. So I didn't save an onion because quite frankly, I don't want to cut another onion. Um, but I cut seven because I had a, a two small ones because you want the large ones. So it's it's about six or seven, six large. And then you sort of figure out something close to that if yours are smaller. Um, and then I cut them in half. And then I like to slice them on the half moon. So you make little half moons thin. Uh -huh. Those really cook down the best. So now we've got these beautiful caramelized onions. They've been cooking. What did you cook it in? Butter or uh, olive oil? Uh, um, it was four tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons olive oil. I also okay. added salt. Um, actually added one of my salts, my holiday blend salt. Um, but you can just add regular salt um, as well because the salt really does help break it down faster. Mm -hmm. And this cooked at a medium low heat for 45 minutes. Um, and it, okay. when I started, it was this high in onions. It was just full of onions. And then they wow. were down to just about the last quarter inch of the pan. So this is the wow. best flavor. I mean, if you ever, you know, whenever someone's cooking onions in the kitchen, that's one of my most favorite flavors yeah. in the world. So this, is, when it's done like this, it gives it such a nice, um, rich uh, texture for when your broth goes in. And that, that's the sort of flavor that you're going to want to capture in French onion soup. So since I've already done this hard part, um, we're going to just go ahead and do some assembly just so you can see okay. how to do it. Okay. So um, after, let's preheat the oven to 350. How many bowls is this going to make? This is going to do six. Um, six. six of this size. Okay. Um, you have some smaller ramekins or something you could stretch this to eight or nine um and then uh, if you want to do them you know if you do it in the larger casserole again you can divvy it up if you have small ramekins yeah like i said you could really stretch it but i, I like this size this sort of feels like a good mm -hmm. soup size so but it's up it's up to you what you have um so we are going to next add our chicken stock to our beautiful caramelized onions okay um, do you uh, do you always use chicken? Because I I often use beef broth with a uh, onion soup. You could definitely use beef broth. In fact, it's probably yeah. more French more traditional to use the beef broth. Yeah, yeah. But, I, was gonna, I was gonna say we're gonna, we're gonna yeah. lighter. I, I used a, now the thing was when I've always made it, I have always used like a Madeira or some kind of sherry in traditionally in the soup, which is why I think it's a beef broth because that holds that flavor better. Yeah, and honestly, you could also do a little, if you're going the red, um, if you're going to beef, you could also do Madeira and then a little Worcestershire sauce, I would actually mm -hmm. do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we're going to go, we're not doing the heavier cheese. We're going to do a, um, a fontina and a little Parmesan. So this oh, nice. is, in general, it's just going to, that's why I called it the Franco-American, because this is sort of the American. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about the traditional for one second so yeah. that people can know the comparison if they don't. You know, normally you go to a restaurant, you order French onion soup, and it's this dark, dark brown color because it is beef-based and red wine probably based, and and you're it's a rich, wholesome, very, very strong soup that is basically has toasted bread on top, onions in it, and then like Gruyere or Emmentaler or whatever kind of Swiss cheesy and it's bubbling over and like seals the the bowl. That's what I remember. Yeah, which is exactly yeah. right. And when I order it in a restaurant, if it doesn't come to me crispy, cheesy, brown, bubbly, I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> he sends it back. 
<laughs> I don't like it when it doesn't okay. <laughs> So I just added five cups of the chicken stock to our reduced onions. And this is going to cook with the cover on for 20 minutes. Okay. okay. So, um, so, so someone's asking what size do you think your bowl is? Is it like 12 ounces? Got any idea? Um, this probably holds, let's see, this jar is eight ounces. It probably holds one of these and some change. So probably 10 ounces maybe. Um, okay. Thanks. Um, so, um, let's see. So we're going to let that cook. Um, and while that's cooking, we're going to make the slaw. And then when this is done, okay. we'll assemble the bowls. Because what we're going to do is we're going to cut. I have some really nice rustic bread that I've um, that's in slices. And we're going to cut. We're going to cube this, put this in the bowl. Then we're going to put the soup on top of it, put the cheese on top of that, and put it in the oven. Okay. Um, nothing wrong with that. So the bread is, um, I did buy this bread today, but stale bread is better. So I went ahead and put this on a baking sheet just for about 10 minutes, just to kind of dry it out. Cause the, you don't want it rock hard, but you want it sort of stale feeling, not toasted, but yeah. kind of dried out. It'll absorb the soup more like a sponge and it won't get totally soggy. You'll still get some of the bite from the bread. Okay. I was going to mm -hmm. say, you know, French people always come up with these ideas of what to do with the stale baguette. The left Okay. Well, while you know. we're cooking, we're gonna make we're gonna make a slaw. So um, this is a take on a um, just a regular slaw, but we're gonna add some white wine vinegar and a little bit of um, celery with the celery leaves and our cabbage. So this we're just gonna cut. I've got um, one, two, three, four, five stalks of celery here. So this is gonna give some nice crunch. Um, and make sure if you are, if you're able to get the leaves, you put the leaves into it because you know I've said that many times. That's where all the good flavor is. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna toss these in there. They are bitter though. I don't think so. Really? Sometimes I think they're bitter, but you have to tell. They them. can be. I think they can be. It yeah. depends on like I think sometimes celery can be bitter if it's. I, I don't know. I've had really bitter celery often. Um, it's weird. Like, Me too. I don't know what makes it that way. Yeah. It's not always that way. I think you have to taste it. Yeah. Um, people yeah. say that if things start to flower, you know, like go to seed, they can get uh -huh. bitter. So it could maybe that's, maybe that's what gives it. Sometimes I've had, I've had really bitter celery and I it's just. Fruit. Maybe we're getting old celery in Santa Fe. Who knows? Yeah. What? <laughs> What's happening? So this is, you know, we're gonna cut the cabbage. What I like to do is I like to, as you, I, I don't know if you saw, but I sliced it and now it's in three parts, right? So you take one part and I, and again, I just like to slice it in um, thin. This is also something you can do in the Cuisinart. Um, I find in the Cuisinart, it does it too. Let's double check to make sure that's going on. Um, I find in the Cuisinart, it gets too slaw. I like slaw where you still got a decent size piece. Um, okay, so we're gonna just see how it, it kind of shreds like that. That's beautiful. Can you see? I don't grow celery. Do you grow celery, Holly? I don't. I have. Um, it I tried to grow it in a pot this summer with an end, and it started to work. It needs yeah. It, well, the top comes out. It it won't grow a stalk that way. But those leaves are usable if you're using if you're adding it to flavor something like a broth or you know um, like adding it to a salad. You, you can have, use if you, um, it needs a it needs a little more room than a pot. So if you're able to put it in the ground or in a bigger bed, um, that's good. Actually, you know this is probably all we need here. Okay, so we're not going to use this. Was a huge head of cabbage, so we're going to sew it. See? Head of cabbage. Head. Big head. Cabbage. You got a nice cabbage on you. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So we're gonna um we're gonna make the dressing for the or the sauce or whatever you want to call it for the salad for the um, slaw. And what's important too with this is you want it to stand, I mean let it set it with the sauce on it. I actually like to leave it room temp. It, we are going to put in a little mayonnaise, so anything over half an hour, throw it in the fridge. But it really does help to break the um, the cap down and just make it a little softer and um, and uh, a little sweeter, actually. I think. Okay, so what's in this is a half a cup of white wine vinegar. 
Uh, is that your Christmas knife? Someone's asking. Of course. <laughs> Still using it every day. Love it. Okay, so that's a half a cup. Did I say half? I said a quarter. See, I oh, even said a half, but you meant a quarter. Uh oh. <laughs> Ish. It must be just genetic. I don't know, people. It's genetic. I, I, can't, I have no explanation for what I'm doing right now. With it's my a quarter. quarter. Okay, there's a quarter. <laughs> You're, killing me. You're killing me with that. Okay. Um, we're going to do a tablespoon of mayo, which I forgot to grab. Hold on. Well, while she's out of frame, I am lusting after her Dutch oven. <laughs> that would make a great yeah. bowl right there. That would make a great That's crusty a bread. It's good stuff. Beautiful. Okay, so we're going to do a tablespoon of mayonnaise. This is just going to give it a little richness, so it makes you think of that traditional um, coleslaw, but we're gonna, the flavor profile is going to be better. Okay, um, a, little, a pinch of salt. I'm sorry, but that is a real measurement. And a pinch of black pepper. And salt's over here. Hold on. Pinch, pinch, pinch. We're making a list, just so you know. Checking it twice. <laughs> for the cookbook somewhere to show all of our expressions for measurements. The Croatian measurement? It will be done. We're going to do a small spoon of olive oil. Okay. <laughs> I want it. Okay. And then we're going to do um, a little bit of lemon zest. Again, citrus is inside. So, um, you know, not all winter things are kale and cabbage. You know, uh, orange and lime and, and lemons are all in season now. So now's a great time to buy them. Oh, you get them in California IA right now, huh? Yeah, well, and you in Florida, they, they're growing them, and Arizona. Um, there's quite a few states, southern states, that grow them, so they don't travel too far to get to you. Actually, southern New Mexico may have a little citrus even. I wonder. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we're also going to do a um, tablespoon of lemon juice. We're going to get our handy dandy. Here? Oh, squeezy. Squeezer alert. Squeezy alert. <laughs> you know, I feel like we should have one of those like think of things that go across the screen. Okay. Yeah, right. Um, Sam. And then we're gonna do a tiny bit of parsley, which will equal a tablespoon chopped. Ooh. <laughs> How's that? Did you just do that? We can special effect. <laughs> it's the squeezy alert. Oh, cool. <laughs> Debriana, you held out for a year on the special effects. No, well, they just they just added them. Really? It's a new thing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's funny. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna put the um, <laughs> parsley in there too. Now, this is one of my favorite shortcut, easy things to do: is to take, put all your ingredients, your make your own uh, salad dressing, is just put it in a little jar, and then a oh, mason jar. <laughs> weird, weird. I would have one. Um, oh, so odd. <laughs> and just give it a good shake, 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 like like your bar. Pretend pencil. you're making a cocktail on Friday. Exactly. <laughs> it's five forty nine. It's way past cocktail hour. Here. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna give it a good shake, and that's gonna emulsify all of the um, the mayo with the oil and vinegar. Okay. You want that? Hmm. Smells good. Okay. okay. So we're just gonna then pour this on the cabbage, okay? And then we'll take our tongs. We're just gonna gently toss it so it coats. You want you really want to take the time to make sure that um, everything's coated because it will make a difference. I love coleslaw. I know. I made this. I love cabbage. cabbage. I we, love cabbage. We have a new vendor at our farmers market. I think I mentioned it has um, Pakistani food. So we have all these chutneys and sauces and all this stuff. So I bought some of the naan bread from them and I put some cabbage on, on the naan and then put their um, eggplant on top. God, it was so good. Okay. And again, this is a great winter vegetable. People think of it more in the summer, but it's grown now. So it's good to eat now. And 
Well, because we eat, we tend to eat coleslaw in the summer, but it's a it's a good winter thing. Well, and the three of us are former ulcer sufferers, so there's that. <laughs> oh, the, the cabbage juice no trick. <laughs> no stress, no stress. Just keep, yeah. keep eating the cabbage; you'll be fine. There's no overachieving here. No. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try it. And then you taste it. Yeah, good. It's okay. good. It's good. It's good. So we're gonna take this and remember, set it aside. It's okay. Room temp for about twenty minutes. Okay. So that's done. Let's clear. Let's clear some space here since I've made an absolute mess. <laughs> oh look! Just push it out of the way. <laughs> it's out of, no, it's gone. I mean, if, I, if I did that, it would fall off. It is well <laughs> My Jedi mind trick. Yeah, Bella here. She just got back from lacrosse Tuesday. Tuesday is cross day. Come say hi, B. Hi, hi Bella. Bella. Hey, everybody. This is Bella. She's going to be picking the winners. Oh yeah, for the queen of the raffle in a week from today. There she That's is. That's right. Woo! <laughs> she plays. And pop. speaking of Cuisinart, there will be a Cuisinart. Yeah, I know. We did, well, we're going to send out a. Um, Big announcement about that tomorrow, so we'll get that done. Yahoo! Debriana and I did a video today. Oh, no, we that did. will be debuting probably tomorrow. And, oh boy! <laughs> it's kind of like Grandma's TikTok, but it's going to be funny. Um, it's hilarious. Okay. We didn't really do a TikTok, but it's TikTok. What? None of us knew what it was really. It's sort of kind of TikTok. We're an age limit for that. Are you? Have you? <laughs> I'm just saying. And I'm asking for a friend. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna take our bread, and we're gonna um, we want it sort of in cubes. So best to use for cutting bread, everyone. Serrated knife. Serrated knife. Yeah, the one with the knife, not the Christmas knife. Yeah, and your ones with the bumps on it. Um, that's like a saw. Just don't saw your fingers off. Okay. So we're going to take for cutting tomatoes. Serrated knives are the best for cutting tomatoes, too. They are. Mm -hmm. I think it's slippery, I like to say, you know? Okay, so uh, bread's not slippery, but it you need a little saw to get through so you don't squish it. Uh, mush it. So we've got, this was one of those pieces. So we're going to put that in the bowl, okay? And we're going to repeat. And I'm going to put these on a, um, on a cookie sheet just because if they bubble over, um, cause we're going to be putting some of the cheese or whatever and it's, um, yeah. it won't get in the bottom of my oven. Okay. So let's continue to do that. Yum, yum, yum. That's going to be so good. <laughs> I'm just looking at this. I'm like, oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Who, who doesn't like chunks of bread? <laughs> I mean, and onion and cheese. Yes. Pretty good. Yeah. I mean, the French, you know, they know what they're doing. And I also, since we're talking about stuff, I also do not like when the onions are not cooked down and they and they serve you the soup and the onions still have a little crunch. No. They have to be almost melted. They have to be mushy. Yeah. They're melted. Yeah. So I, I literally wrote down in my recipe, I said onions must be mushy. And that it's, it's a mushy, melty, squeezy, squishy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so as you can see, this is, let me hold this. This is hot. Um, we've got a nice sort of oh. mushy. And that's when you cook them for that long. It, they do get, there's just no way. They get squishy. Well, that's cheating when you don't cook it that long because then they're not cooked. You, <laughs> this definitely takes a little patience, but it, yeah. I mean, and if you, if you can't and you're in a bind, I, you know, it's blasphemous to say such things, but you could use an instant, you know, onion flavoring, but you know, well, the other thing is, I think you could actually put it in an, in a um, pressure cooker or an instant pot. Right. Then you have if to stir it as frequently. I honestly, I do the dishes. I'd come and stir it. I clean up the kitchen. Yeah. So, you know, the, uh, the one of the things I was going to mention about this dish is that it's it does take um, longer, but it's all about timing. So I like to tell people, think about 
what you're making. So, you know, while this was cooking, we made the coleslaw. It has to wait for 15 minutes, which gives us plenty of time to finish the soup. You know, mm -hmm. So try to think of things that you could be doing, you know, simultaneously or when things are waiting or, you know, give yourself a manicure. You can. So good. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that while cooking. Um, <laughs> Okay. Also, though, why would you want to rush onion soup? The, the way I feel about it is if you're going to rush it and not cook the onions all the way, just have it the next night and make something else. You know, yeah. like it's not worth it. It is something that, you know, you need to know you're going to do it the day before. I would. So, that, you know, pick it on a night. Like tonight, Bella just got home from lacrosse. Jeff got soccer. So I know we're all going to be getting together in about an hour and a half. So everything will be ready and good for them to go. Um, so, you know, it's the kind of thing that you can make on a Sunday afternoon too. Mm -hmm. um, so before we put the soup in, I am going to um, check it for salt, and, um, make sure it's salty enough. Okay. Um, because the last salt, I did the chicken broth actually um, did have, it wasn't a low sodium. Oh. Wow. Well, that's good. That's I'm really great. interested in this because I've never done it with chicken broth. It's me either. I'm the same thing. I'm very it's interested. Really interesting. This recipe was from an old, it's a version that I have amended, but it's from an old William Sonoma um, cookbook from like the early 90s, like when William Sonoma was first, was, well, it was more popular. Cool. I never have done it with chicken stock. Yeah. So this is why it's the sort of California and American. And yeah, yeah. we're using, um, you know, parsley and thyme in it. So the thyme was already went in and went to cook with onions. So the onions now are nice and sweet. Um, not sugary sweet, but, but yeah. really sweet, like carrots, you know, that kind of sweet. Um, mm -hmm. The broth is, is cooked, um, has absorbed a lot of it, but it's still liquidy enough. So we're going to put it in and the bread will absorb it. So we are going to ladle. So I don't think it needs any more salt. Actually, I think it's just right. I'm, I am going to put one little round of black pepper. A round of pepper. Um, a round. Round and round. Of round and round we go. Where all about the shape. Nobody all knows. About the a round of pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not see last night's episode about the Greeks? Come on. It's done. When it's done. That's when it's done. That's right. It's so it funny, those recipes of those, uh, those women's groups throughout the years and their clubs and their whatever. And it's like, I don't need to tell you the details. If you don't know, you don't have the right to pick up this cookbook. Okay. Thank you. They're so, nice. <laughs> okay. so we put two ladles um, and make sure you get, you know, broth. And I mean, there's so much onion in here. You can't, but just get, try to get, um, you know, not just all onion, not just all broth. Okay, so two generous labels. This one needs a little more broth. Okay. Yeah, you got to leave a little room at the top for the cheese. We got, I mean, <laughs> it's it's illegal if you don't. You get a citation. You get a, it's too sad. You get a French citation. <laughs> citation. That's right. You definitely get a citation from me. I don't like it. <laughs> so we're gonna um actually we're gonna add a little parsley right now on the top. Oh, that'll be nice. Just to give it a little, another good digestion. What kind of regiment is around? It's a holly. It's a hollyism. It's a pin. It's a sprinkle. How about a sprinkle? Is that a, is that a good measurement? Okay. A sprinkle. Um, let me make sure I'm doing everything correctly. Okay, now for the best part, the cheese. Yay! This is Fontina, which is a nice creamy mm. cheese. I've already shredded it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If you don't have, Fontina is usually pretty easy to find, but if your grocery store doesn't have it, you can use Havarti with this, or mm -hmm. um, you could use Swiss cheese. Um, yeah, like an Emmentaler or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, it's- or Gruyere, I mean, Gruyere is traditional, I think. It's, yeah, it, Gruyere yeah. and Emmentaler are the traditional, but I, yeah. I kind of like, this makes it just sort of creamy and good. And well, it's nice that you're mixing it up. I mean, and let's talk about, the other alternative, like usually when I make it, I don't cube my bread. I leave it whole, mm -hmm. and but it's not covering. It's just just smaller than the bowl. And like the floating in the top, yeah. yeah. Um, but you can do whatever you want, you know? There's options. 
It depends on your bowl really too. So you can kind of let that dictate what works. This one's a little deeper. So I thought, you know, yeah. it would be better. And, and because they're a little toasted and dry and there's such a thick crust on those, you're going to get a nice spoon. Mm, that would be good. And eat it. So it'll be good. Okay. So we've done the bread, the onions, the cheese, the part. And so how much cheese do you think? Is this a uh, uh, eyeball it? So I, I graded in the recipe. It will tell you to grade. Um, it will tell you to grade how much? One, a half a cup, excuse me, half a cup of Pontina. And we're also just to add a little, again, another little kick that's totally non-traditional. Wait a minute, a half a cup per bowl? No, 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 a half a cup for all of them. So it's I just did enough. I, I had shredded a half a cup, um, so mm -hmm. just enough to just cover the top. So it, you, okay. not a lot. Um, I mean, as you can see, it's already practically melting here. So I, I also like to do a little sprinkle of Parmesan cheese. Not, I mean, this is literally like a teaspoon per one, just a tiny little sprinkle here. Just gonna give it a little salty. And this is, it'll give it a little crunch too. When yeah, it'll cheese. get nice and brown uh, when yeah. it gets in the oven. Okay, so voila, as you can see. Voila, you see it? That looks great. So these <laughs> are going to go in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes. I'm gonna, you know, the broth was already hot. This is really just about getting it, the bread to absorb the liquid um, and melting and browning the cheese. And then when they come out, um, they'll be molten hot. So let them cool a little bit before you eat them. Um, and then serve them with a side of the slaw. Which Gorgeous. Great dinner. Bravo. Mm. So the slaw is already. Um, the, I want to eat that slaw. It's so good. The cabbage is already softened a little bit. Um, and again, this we only use a tablespoon of mayonnaise in this whole bowl. So it gives it a little bit of richness, but it's not goopy you know this is not mayonnaise at all and the red wine vinegar has a nice tartness which is going to cut all of that cheese well not you know, the cheese and bread and onion so they'll pair well together so you can enjoy it nice. and uh, digest it with your so you're just baking it at 350 you're not doing any broil no broil no. You're not gonna, you don't need to. Um, this, it'll start to brown. I'll, I'll take a picture of it when it's done. Okay. So you can see it. Um, and, um, and I also have a photo of how much, how large the before and after with the onions. Oh, cool. <laughs> like here to like there. It was, it's pretty incredible. Um, but it's good and it's worth it. That's great. Thank you, Holly. Okay, thank you. We have a couple of announcements. We just want to tell everybody before we sign off. Right, I'm going to put this in the end while you're talking. One is the recipe contest. If you the recipe are contest. to be in the cookbook, we are giving you this opportunity. Ten lucky Corona Kitchen members will be selected. Don't you want to be one of them? <laughs> so, yeah. you out there that I sent you remember people I sent you thing you better submit your recipes because I know they're delicious and the deadline is February 9th for the recipe contest because we have to have time to get you into the manuscript yeah. of the book for the publisher so send in your recipes if you want to do it and then mm -hmm. the other thing is the raffle woo <laughs> so we are having a raffle for the final um, five thousand dollars we need to raise. So um, we have some prizes coming up, and we're so lucky to have wonderful people to sponsor these gifts for the raffle. Thank you, Holly's Homegrown, Holly Cuisinart people. There's a Cuisinart. Holly's Homegrown. <laughs> Woo! That's the grand prize. Then we have David Furlano's gorgeous earrings. I saw them in front of my face today at Debriana's house. They're beautiful. Thank you, David. And then we have um, Panina Meisels, who's the food photographer for us, as well as Julia Child and Jacques Pepin and Alice Waters. Sonoma. She's donating a cookbook. We shall sign it. Um, awesome. and, That's then, 
And I have Meatball Chronicles swag. Woo! Yeah, this is amazing. One woman show. She had a lot of tchotchkes left over because she didn't get to go to London. Because right. I didn't get to go to London and I didn't get to go to New Orleans. But I have aprons. These are all embroidered. And a coffee mug. They're so cute. I saw them today again in person. So, and it comes with my meatball recipe. Do you understand how the, my the secret re meatball recipe is not in the cookbook because it's so secret, but you would get it if you do the raffle. <laughs> okay, so the people who are already given will be in the raffle. If you give over 100, you'll be in the raffle. And then Bella will draw the winner next week. Yay! It's gonna be very, she's warming her hands up. She's ready. She's ready. <laughs> it's gonna be a really exciting show next Tuesday. Um, I feel like we should get dressed up, like the Oscars. Should we get dressed up? Yes! Okay. We'll get dressed up. <laughs> I'll wear my hair up. Just cool. Okay, okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> that, that's strange. I'll wear a ponytail. I'll put on some diamond earrings and I don't know what in a year. Um, but the who, you know, there you go. We'll get dressed from the waist up. Exactly. As I will be in jeans and black tie. Like sequin a top and pajamas. Sequin top and pajamas. That's what I'm gonna do. Like a party mullet, like party on the top. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the party. It's a top party. Okay, don't forget to check out Holly's homegrown.com. <laughs> for her salts and vinegars and oils. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Yay. Thank you. Bon appetit. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You, Holly, for a fabulous dinner. I did it. That looks so good. I don't know why it's so loud. You got to the onion. There's no there's no rhyme or reason. We don't have a sound department or editor. We have nothing. We got nothing. Can you hear Rumbo barking? Jesus. <laughs> Everybody wear your mask. Stay safe. Be safe. We'll see you tomorrow. Go fund me. Five bucks. Come on, me. You can do it.